All right, folks, this setup is so primitive, but who cares? I just want to record this video um, because... <laughs> okay, um, thank God that he has a plan because we are in a state of unbelievable rebellion and confusion worldwide. North America is my personal continent and I just... There are, you know, the, the war is between us and the devil, okay? Mankind versus the devil and his host. Why, there, there's so many people are naive to this war, so many people have checked out on the war, and so many people are not helping fight the war. And I just... I can't believe how, like, you're just like, why aren't more souls getting saved? Why is everyone so naive? And the thing that I hate the most is why are our elders and the fathers and the people who have the, the money currently, why are they not doing, doing anything for the gospel? And why, why aren't more miracles happening? These are my heart's cries and my heart's questions. Why aren't there more miracles happening? Why aren't more people seeking God? Why, isn't, why don't I have a team of researchers behind me, paid for by a God-filled righteous government that are, for the glory of God, we're getting the Gematria thing done, publishing out there. I'm like, this is a revelation from God, it's for the glory of God, so let's get a whole team of people on it and let's do it properly for God's glory and for man's understanding of God. Like, we look like trash right now. Like, we look like total trash. And, like, why is no one upset by this? Or if they are upset by this, they're not offering the solution to it. Like, you know, it's just, when are people going to pray to God? When is every single person on this planet going to cry out to Jesus Christ and say, God, deliver us from crap. Like, deliver us from trashy behavior and stupid investments, dumb jobs, dumb wastes of time, focusing on stupid things rather than good things. Like, it just, you need, I tell you by God Almighty, you need to cry out to the living God to pull you from the mire of trashiness and stupidity. Everyone does, our entire lives long. We need to be crying out to God in, in the silence of our hearts at least, saying, God, deliver me from trash. God, deliver us from trash. God, deliver everyone from behaving like trash, talking like trash, and being so far from who you are, it's not funny. And it isn't funny. It is so stupid. And the standards are, we don't even have standards anymore. Anyways. I just, I'm sick of it, I just, just like, this video is my outlet for my personal prayer expressions, like, to the world. Like, if I was to go home to Jesus, and go home to heaven tonight, I'm like, it would be a point of satisfaction to preach everything you ever wanted to preach about everything you've ever seen and heard in this entire world. And so I do. Um, but I, we know the truth right now. We know how bad it is. And this is where I put hope in God. You know, like Moses, back in the days of the rebellion, like... Moses had God, thankfully, to bear with the insanity of the people. But that's what it feels like, right? Our school, we, like, we know it. Our schools are a joke. Our curriculum is a joke. It's a total mess. It doesn't have God in Our politicians are a joke. Our leaders are a joke. The people who have the money are a joke. And the people who are mostly watched on the media are a joke. But what that says about all the people who are supporting them is that they're also a joke. Because these people would not be in their positions if there weren't a lot of people who are also a joke giving them attention and all this. It's a giant cesspool. We have to be honest about how ugly we look today on this planet. But I'm not here to be like the secular news media and just talk about the trash. There is a solution. It's called every single human being, young and old, cry out to the living God every single day like Jesus taught us for deliverance, help, and mercy against our own sin problem. And it's like, I just, okay. But, you know, how can, how can people cry out to God if they don't believe in him? How can they believe in him if they don't have evidence, if it's not taught in our schools? Uh, anyways, okay, so I put my hope, 
I, folks, I am not making this video putting my hope in, my hope is in God, okay? God, nothing is impossible for God. He's all-powerful. God is fully aware of all the world's problems. He's fully aware of every word that I'm saying right now. He's fully aware of all the feelings I've ever had that you've ever had. He's, he, can, he knows everyone's thoughts. He reads your mind. God is fully aware of everything on earth. All the sin, all the problems, all the stupidity, all the ignorance, everything. He knows it all. And so I take hope in God and his power and his ability to massively change all this. I believe that it's in my heart because God has put it in my heart that we are going to see a massive change on planet Earth, a revival, whatever you want to call it. It's called a total cleansing of mankind, a total spiritual baptism in, in God, like Holy Spirit. So, um, but anyways, we look like trash right now. And if you're not a true Christian, like anyone that's close to God, anyone that is a true Christian, I don't even care what my hair looks like, the prophets never cared, anyone that is a true Christian um, right now sh should just be like, what on earth is going on and when is this going to change? And like you, you have to have frustration. Like if you are a Christian right now and you are not feeling extremely angry with the state of the world, you probably aren't that close to God. Like, you know, I just, we got to see a change. It just, our schools suck, our politicians suck, but it just shows you that the average person sucks. If the leadership sucks, it pretty much shows you there's no, there's no one around them that has the balls or the courage, whatever you want to call it, to call them out and say, why aren't you talking about Jesus from your microphone? Why aren't you giving glory to Jesus Christ from your stage and, and the platform? Why aren't you giving glory to God with your talents? Like it, it's, just, it's just absolutely sickening. So we have a whole bunch of idolaters today. We, I could list them personally. There's a whole ton. It's sickening. There's a whole ton of humans on earth today that are not talking about Jesus. They, they, are, they want as much for themselves as they can possibly get. Okay? We know this. It's, it's so obvious. Most of them are athletes. Many of them are musicians. Many of them are politicians. Most of them are bankers. Most of them, it's pretty simple. If they don't talk about Jesus, if he's not the one that they're serving by means of talking about Jesus, whenever they have the microphone, whenever they get to, whenever they're in front of people, if they're not talking about Jesus, the great I am, they are serving themselves or they're serving their company and which is also serving themselves. Like, and that's you know, like, when did this become cool? This is stupid. It's, it's unsatisfying. It's dumb. Everyone secretly knows that it's dumb. Even the people that are doing it know that it's dumb. On the inside of their hearts, they, they're thinking, they're saying, there has to be something more. Like, like, there has to be, you were born to serve Jesus. Jesus is your maker. Jesus is God. Like, and he loves you and he made you. Like God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Ghost made you. They designed you. They like you. But So why are we not talking about them? Why are we not in love with them? Why are we so bloody absorbed in ourselves? Like, I can name specific companies. Like, take your pick. Google, Microsoft, Apple. The, the leaders and people at, at, in these companies don't talk about Christ. They don't even think Christ knows anything about code. They are so blind. And it's just like, they talk about themselves, they talk about how much money they've collected from the masses, and it's disgusting. Pretty much anyone that's like deep in the stock market, and it's disgusting. We know it's disgusting. I tell you, we are in darkness, and until people start confessing the name of Jesus on their lips, the devil is dancing on your head. The devil? And all of his minions are dancing on your head. They're dancing on your bones. They're dancing on your butt. They're dancing on your soul. And they're dancing all over all of you and all of us until we are declaring the name of Jesus everywhere we go in public. That is the truth. That is the truth. <laughs> the less people talk about Jesus, the more the devil dances on top of everyone. And, and believe me, the devil's, it's like, the devil's dream world is where a few disgusting humans have collected so much junk unto themselves and everyone else is practically starving and 
It's disgusting, okay? You can name whoever you want that is not a Christian, that is a, is a huge money worshiper, a technology wor worshiper, Elon Musk. I've never heard the guy testify of Jesus Christ in public. These people are not your friend. I'm tell telling you, material stuff is junk compared to spiritual condition. If Elon Musk is not talking about Jesus Christ when he has his microphone, he is not your friend. He's your enemy. He's not serving Christ. It's like he's, got, he's collected a ton of money from you and other people. And it's really not making anyone happier. Because the gospel of Jesus Christ is what makes human souls happier. Electric cars will not make you happy. I'm, it, it, it will not. It's, it's all ignorance and rebellion against what Jesus told us. And um, I, I just get so disturbed and I just get so pissed off at just how stupid it all is. And how, and how stupid it is. And there's nothing more irksome. You say, who would this video technically be addressing? It's addressing people that are on screens today. I'm talking to people who are in positions of leadership, power, that have obviously gifted intelligence, all that stuff. And, you know, they have, they got followers, they got platforms and all this stuff. And they're on the TV screens. They, maybe they're athletes and they perform well and, or musicians, okay, whatever it is. They're not talking about Jesus. They're not giving thanks to Jesus. They're not giving glory to Jesus as the great I am. And they certainly aren't pursuing a personal relationship with Jesus. There's so much to preach. You know, we got pastors. We have so-called spiritual leaders in religious circles that do not encourage people to hear the personal voice of God. Like, they, they don't know how. And it's brutal. Like, if you lead people down a path of, of religion and that, that it's not about you being in a personal relationship with God and hearing his voice all the time, um, it's, it's just total bunkness. It's just total death. Um, you need to be hearing from God every single day, and that's what he desires for you, and you will. Trust me. You ask him for it. He'll bring you there. It's not rocket science. And then when you're, what I'm saying is when you're a preacher, when you're a pulpit, like when you're a paid-for pastor in a church living off of the labor of people that are slugging it out in the world, you better be close to God and be feeding those people well with your words. Like, my God, it's just unbelievable how low the standards are to be a paid-for pastor these days. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. I'm like, and it is disgusting. But, I mean, you should be encouraging your entire congregation to be pursuing the personal voice of God to every individual every single day. It starts, it's called silent prayer. Okay, it's just, it's unbelievable. But, so anyways, I'm saying this, you know, I'm saying this as a father would look out over his children on planet Earth and be like, this is disgusting. Like, this is so far from what it could be and what it should be. I only take faith in God. Like, nothing is impossible for God. God is all-powerful. God knows everything I dream of. God knows everything that's possible. God knows everything, and he's capable of more than even I can dream of. And God knows how bad it is right now. And I just take faith in God's power, love, and ability to massively pull us all from the mire. Because we're in the mire. It, the reason I'm making this video is, is for my own personal satisfaction because I need to get this out of me. Like, I need to get these confessions out of me. That this is what I actually see in the world. And this is what I actually evaluate the world's... Like, it's like a teacher with a report card. You know, I, I, it's like, we're basically failing. Like, we look like trash compared to where God can take us. So I take hope in God that he's going to massively awaken everyone and it's going to be actually awesome. Okay? Myself included. I want more God-likeness in myself. Who doesn't? We all should. Well, the truth is many people don't, but they all should. If you desire God, he'll reveal more of you know, said. He will draw near to you and all that. But um, you're just like... There's a lot of stupid people in this world. There's a lot of dumb things being done. Um, there's a lot of time being wasted. Um, once you know that Jesus Christ is God and God is three persons, um, everything else becomes very insignificant. Uh, like even people, like, you know, as pressure, everyone needs to get saved. Everyone needs to go to heaven. Everyone is an eternal soul. But compared to Jesus, compared to God, the maker, 
people are as nothing in terms of their worth. Let's be honest, we have a problem today, that we are worshiping humans. That's what most people worship. Of course, there's, there's nothing that they can see that's better, okay? Most humans are worshiping humans, okay? They're serving themselves, they're serving their own names, they're serving their wife, their girlfriend, the sex relationship they have, whatever it is. Most humans are worshiping humans. We need more humans that are worshiping God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Ghost. It's just like, it's a simple logic question. Who is most valuable? We know that a person is most valuable. Well, who of all people is most valuable? God. God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So why aren't there names on our lips? It shows you how pathetic we are. It shows you the idolatry. If you want to know what a person worships and who they love, just analyze the words on their lips. If you could do a mind read and scrape daily the words going through their head from morning until night and even through the dream process at, while sleeping, you would instantly, with less than a week's worth of data, you would know exactly who they serve and what they worship. I think it would be like, you're just like, you'll know. I mean, we already get inklings of it. Now with God's sovereignty, you know, over Google and stuff, Google publishes the top, the top, you know, 50, 100 searches. Now I believe with all my heart, we, this is gross. It's, it is, you know, those lists are even filtered. The, the public results that Google releases to the public, those results are filtered because new statistics show that over one third of internet searches are for pornography. And those, those, those do not get released in Google's top 100 searches. Let's be honest, okay? Let's just be honest. The data is all out there. But what I'm saying is if like Google releases the top 100, that's what people are currently chasing. That's who people are currently worshiping. Okay? And um, it's got to change. It's just got to change. You know, people say, oh, I want to go higher. Oh, I want to be a better person. I'm like, you need to be talking. There, there's, if you want to be a better person, it's called becoming more like God, your father. And there is no way to become the true you and the better person I believe in you being you. There's so much to say about this. You need to be your unique self. You are special. You are precious. You are distinct from everyone in history. And you are to be celebrated and all that stuff. But if you are not talking about God, Father, Jesus Christ, the Son, and the Holy Ghost on your lips and in your mind all day as much as possible, you're never going to go higher. You're never going to go higher. You're, because you are not drawing yourself near to God and you're not drawing others near to God. It's as simple as the words on your lips. I'm preaching to myself, folks. It's as simple as the words on your lips. Now, I believe that even more important is the thoughts in your mind, okay? Because, you know, <clears throat> um, there are, you know, places and times when you, when you know that your relationship with God is between you and Him. And if God speaks something to me in a situation... I don't have to verbalize it to all the humans in the sound of my voice. I just know that. The Holy Spirit gives you the right feelings in those moments all the time. Okay, so there is this sacred, private, personal relationship with God that we are all invited to. Absolutely. And it's real. And there are things that God tells you and me that we will never share with other humans and we don't need to. But as we all get closer to God and we are all in deep pursuit, we will all, okay, be more open and be more vocal and be more comfortable and be more just united in sharing these things and sharing these thoughts and words from the Lord. And people will be talking all the time about God. And they'll be talking all the time about what the Holy Spirit, even in business, in fact, especially in business, like on your job site, coworkers will be saying to each other, the Holy Spirit just said this to me, and it's accurate, and it's true, and it's actually true, and the other person will say, yeah, that's exactly what I felt, and it'll be, and, it's, and it'll just go, and you'll make an improvement in what you're doing. God is the fastest person in the universe. God is very interested in the work of your hands that he's called you, and all that good stuff, okay? But it all, like I tell you, right now, we live in the dark ages. Right now, we all live in the mire. We have so few people connected to God well. We have so few people hearing the personal voice of God well and desiring with all. 
that it's, it's just darkness. It's very disorganized. It's very impoverished. We don't have very much sharing. I tell you folks, I have dreamed of a future where there was way more sharing, way more feasting, and way more friends for everyone because we're close to God. Folks, if we, we, we can easily surpass the kingdom of Solomon for righteousness and blessing, and enough said. It, it can be staggering how good things are compared to what they currently are. Okay? I'm just saying, it looks like trash today. It, it, it looks like trash. If Paul the Apostle, you know, read the daily newspaper, visited Canada for a few weeks, walked through Parliament, saw, you know, the Trumpisms, and, you know, there's a lot of, it, there's just a lot of chaos in politics, and he would probably, like, he would be just shocked with, with incredulity, and just, just be like, what is this? And what happened to these humans? Like, that they are so far from Christ. Anyways, but that's, um, so, uh, yeah, no, it's ugly right now. It's madness. Um, I, sometimes I'm like, I feel like I should have a team of researchers that are working on the Gematria stuff with me together. Um, I just... We, we need an awakening. Um, anyways, it's pretty bad right now. Yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> the truest form of healing at the beginning is for everyone to admit before God, like you just have to take a proper evaluation, like a report card, say, yeah, no, in general, we suck right now. In general, North America is sucking wind in terms of how the average one of us compares to true God-likeness. We, we're sucking wind. It, it's never been worse. And <laughs> it's just like, so, okay, so nothing is impossible for God. Thank God it's not that hard for him to baptize everyone in the Holy Ghost and change our school system and curriculum and leadership overnight. I'm like, Lord, I'm willing to be the king if necessary. God can promote anyone through signs and wonders and miracles at any moment, like Joseph and all that stuff. It's like, we need new leadership. We need people who know the Lord and want to see a God-based curriculum in our schools. And um, it's we, we, I just, as, as a truth speaker, it's as ugly as hell right now. Um, and it's, it's just very stupid and very confusing and I am just, I'm just saying it's pathetic compared to what it will be. Like, I, I would love nothing more than to be a true prophet, God willing, in the history books where the words that I say now actually are the truth and they're also prophetic that we are going to see an awesome future compared to what we have now in North America. Okay. Um, yeah. So, um, Gematria needs to get into our brains and into our school system, and I need a team of researchers on this project with top tools, top equipment, real funding. I need some rich men out there to support me, fund this project so we can get this published properly, intelligently, wisely, accurately, beautifully, gloriously, in a way that's worthy of the King of Kings. Um, okay, if you don't know... You can watch all my videos on Jesus equals 8 at 8, Father equals 58, so you can understand what Gematria is and all the findings I've had and how worthy it all is. And um, my email, if, if you actually are a man out there with some kind of balls and integrity and like willingness to serve God in this way, you can send me a very respectful email to dlkube at gmail.com saying I am willing to serve the Lord and help in this Gematria joy. Um, otherwise it's, it's, it's really quite sickening how many people are just running around, you know, this, it's childish, you know, when we're children, we run around and we go to the candy store and we're enamored by how much we can enjoy for ourselves. When we grow up, we actually do have a desire to serve someone. What does that mean? Like we actually have a desire to do good work for the great king. And I'm not talking doing good work for your secular boss that is just worshiping money and more material things. He's still a child. 
I've said it before, I'll say it again. The scariest people on planet Earth are spiritual babies in full-grown bodies. You know, full-grown men that are still children spiritually and yet think they are grown up. It is gross. Like, I preach to myself at all times. I'm very self-scrutinous with all of this stuff. But it's like... <clears throat> um, you grow up and you, you have a desire to do good work for God. And that means you're going to be talking about God. You can't, this is such a lie of the devil. You cannot say that you are a lover of Jesus and a servant of Jesus and a lover of God unless you are talking about them. You know, that is the point of graduation that we all must come to. If we don't know something about them, we can at least say that we are interested. Say, I am desiring God. I am seeking the Lord Jesus. I am seeking this great I am with all my heart. I want to learn. I want to grow. And I want to know as much as possible about Father, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost as possible. <sighs> Anyways, um, I'm just about done preaching to this camera because... I don't know who this is going to touch and when or why or if in the future, but um, I got to satisfy myself with the Lord every single day, doing study. Maybe I'll do Morgan Matry studies myself. And but uh, yeah, it is. Um, it's just pretty gross out there. It, it's it's just pretty gross. Um, the kind of stuff that people are chasing, consuming producing, watching, and uh, I just say to every human who, who will ever listen or watch this video, cry out to God today. You as an individual, every single human has always been able to do that and can do that right now. You yourself personally, cry out to God for total deliverance from your crappy self and total baptism in his likeness saying god now i this is everyone is unique god wants your you god wants your specialness god wants your uniqueness you are a separate spirit from okay well this is interesting jesus said i and my father are one jesus said when you become a christian you are one with the father i believe that with all my heart and yet you are a separate person somehow. There's a theological discussion for many people. But I personally believe that inside this physical body, there are four unique spirits living. Father, God, Jesus, the Son, the Holy Ghost, and Derek Kuby. Okay? And uh, that your unique spirit is different, even, in personality, uh, style points, like... Just the things you love and don't love compared to every other spirit that God has created in the universe, okay? And he loves everyone. But it's like... <laughs> we were ordained to growth. It's just how fast are we going to grow? We were ordained to growth, but how fast are all of us going to grow? I'm tired of slow growth in myself and in other people. And I'm saying, would everyone just please, please, please cry out to God? In Jesus, like today, right now, saying, God, deliver me from, like, take me higher. I want to grow up. I want to be, like, I just want to see more and just, let's go. I just, you got to drop kick your unbelief. You got to drop kick your crappy parents. You got to drop kick, you know, people that disappointed you in the church or wherever. You got to drop kick every single person that ever let you down or disappointed you. You got to drop kick every single person that is not like God. Like, you know, what? That's when I'm like, come on, human race. Come on, human race. We are so beneath God likeness. We are so beneath the love of God and also the intelligence of God and the wisdom of God and the generosity of God and the faith of God and the confidence of God. And the beauty of God, like we are just so far beneath. And I'm like, folks, let's lift it up higher by calling upon God. <laughs> There's so many things that God teaches you. And we need to dis all this stuff. 
anyways, there's my rant. Um, I really, I really hope that there's a tear-jerkingly more satisfying generation in my future than this current one. I really hope for it, folks. I really do ask for it in Jesus' name. Because I'm tired of seeing people that are fat, ugly, depressed, overweight, and just everything's wrong. Like just homeless, you know, just friendless, jobless, depressed. What's even worse though is people who are arrogant, greedy, proud, bullying others, you know, tromping all over people. We can go on and on. You can, you can list sins to no end because there's no shortage. <laughs> oh. All right. Please do me a favor and cry out to God today. <laughs> it's just like... Oh. I don't know how God puts up with us puts up with us sometimes. I think it's because you know, he knows the future and he has a wonderful plan to pull us out of this madness and make things much better than they currently are. Mm. All right. <sighs> Seek Jesus, call upon his name. Ask him for anything and everything that you want and need. And then get it from him. Like, he will, he'll give it to you. Just like, one of the things I hate the most is just experiencing and seeing people, you know, latching on to other people, you know, to, to try and get what they need. It's like, it's not going to happen. I'm sorry. Like, I am not going to satisfy you. No one is. I, I am not going to impress you that much. Well, I no, that's not true. I do, pray, I do believe in Jesus' name. When we are filled with the Holy Ghost as the children of God, we are absolutely stunning and absolutely impressive, and we are absolutely glorious and worthy. That is the truth with all my heart. But not even close to God himself. Like, not even close to just cry out to Jesus. Just, folks... There's no limit to how God-like you can be in this life. You could be the most loving, truth-filled, knowledgeable, generous, giving, anti-Satan genius of all time. Because God is infinite. And it can happen. Like, And what if it happened? Enough said. I just, I'm tired of seeing defeat. I'm tired of seeing failure. I'm tired of seeing, you know... Just dumb stuff. It's not satisfying. And, uh, yeah. It just, you know. People, it's, it's, it's just so dumb. So many jobs are dumb. Just, so many pursuits are dumb. They're, they're, they're connected to some form of idolatry where people want another object in their life. Another, even if it's a big machine, like a boat or a house or, a fancy car, like it's a dead object, like our personal character, our personal glory, our personal God-likeness is looking like trash. And, and, and so we surround ourselves with all these shiny machines that make us look cooler and make us like apparently like seem like we've got it together. When the reality is we don't have one ounce of God-likeness flowing through us like we should. All right, it's called true revival. It's like, um, and and the women are waiting. I'm I'm anyone who is a follower. I'm talking to younger people, and of course, women. The Bible says are followers of men. History itself tells us that women are waiting, saying, "Where are the leaders? Where are the men that are like talking about God and know what they're talking about and are actually God-like?" They're saying, "Where are they? Like, who can we trust? Who can we get married to? Like." Women are freaking out. They're like, who, who? I can't even date someone. I can't even get married to someone. It's just, yeah, it's pretty brutal. Um, 
so ay 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 but I'm like you, you simply have to call upon God like like you simply have to call upon God like the first thing you have to do is acknowledge that you've got a problem you know it's like self-scrutiny 101 admit that you've got a problem and then cry out to God from the depths of your being to see him fix it and change it it's like God is the answer for everything like anything that you see or experience in this entire life that is displeasing or you know just you know it's less than you know what it could be cry out to God he's capable you know the Bible says God loves hearing people pray you know he loves to answer you know all right that's my video for now